En este video, supuestamente, nos encontramos con una descripción de Jordan Peterson referente a un sueño. Donde, según dicen algunos, eso es lo que a mí me dijeron, Jordan Peterson sueña con Jesús. Sueña con Jesús. Vamos a ver a ver de qué se trata. Vamos. I had a dream once, and I'm speaking psychologically here, not, not theologically. I had a dream once. I was in the cemetery of an old church, an old cathedral, um, surrounded by the graves, and there were indentations in the grounds where all the graves were, and all of a sudden they, the graves started to open, and it was a graveyard where great people, great men of the past had been buried, and so grave opened and a, an armed king stood up, and then another grave opened and another armed king stood up, and this happened all around me, and these were very formidable figures, right? They were the great heroes of the past, and after a number of them appeared on the scene, they looked around and saw each other, and being warrior types, they immediately started to fight. And the question is, what stops the great kings of the past from fighting? And I had a revelation after the dream. I can't remember if it was part of it, but in, yes, it was part of the dream. They all bowed down to the figure of Christ. I thought, and then I woke up and I thought, what in the world does that dream mean? What in the world could that possibly mean? And then I, I, I understood it. I understood that If you have 20 kings, let's say, and you took the thing that was most king-like about each of them and then you combined it into a single figure, then you'd get a single figure of transcendent heroism, of transcendent good. And it's a tenant of the Jungian school of psychology, let's say, that that figure of transcendent good is symbolized by the image of Christ. And the purpose of that image is so that even the tyrannical king has someone to bend his knee to. And that's absolutely vital. I mean, it does, you don't have to approach it from a religious perspective, although you inevitably do, because when you speak of things at this level, that's what happens. But you need an image of the transcendent embodied good. Lo trascendente encarnado, papi. Fua. To serve as something that unites the great tyrants of the past. It's something like that. It's an emergent, it's an emergent vision of embodied unity. And it's a psychological necessity, it's a sociological necessity. And I think it bears very strongly on your question about why is it that people matter. It's the 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 classic Western answer to that, the Judeo-Christian answer to that, is because you have a spark of divinity within you and that divinity is a reflection of this transcendent good and it's obligatory for me to recognize that in you and vice versa if we're going to inhabit the same territory without mayhem peacefully and with the ability to cooperate. Now you might say well the mere fact that a transcendent image is necessary as a uniting figure doesn't prove the reality of that image. But I would say, well, yes, but it doesn't disprove it, and it strongly hints at something more profound, especially when you also ally it with the observation that the encounter with something truly admirable produces the instinct of awe. And that's not a rational instinct. It's an irrational instinct, but it's a marker that you're in the presence of something greater than yourself. And it's not something that you have voluntary control over. It's something that overtakes you. And it could easily be a reflection of the truth. Now, you can make a, biological re you can make a biologically reductionistic argument about that, but it starts to become extraordinarily difficult because you, you, you enter into the realm where these transcendent experiences of religious significance and awe are a phenomenological and psychological reality. And it's not easy to explain why that's the case. ¿Qué decir? ¿Qué decir? ¿Qué decir? A ver, evidentemente no interrumpí el, 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 
el discurso porque era majestuoso lo que estaba diciendo. Era majestuoso. Gracias, Jean. Gracias, Jean. Lo hiciste fenomenal a, tra a la traducción y, y demás. Lo hiciste fenomenal. Se entendió absolutamente todo. ¿Qué decir? A ver, dos cosas para rescatar. La primera, esa supuesta revelación importante. Yo personalmente creo que Dios sigue utilizando el medio del sueño para comunicar ideas que de otra manera no podría comunicar a personas específicas. Dadas las características de la personalidad del individuo, probablemente Dios no pueda comunicar ciertas verdades por cómo el sujeto es. Entonces utiliza el sueño. Yo creo que Dios sigue comunicándose por medio de sueños. Y evidentemente... Esto parece demostrarse en esta apreciación de Jordan Peterson, donde dice, bueno, el sueño me dirigió a esto y habla de, habla de la interpretación del sueño como si fuese una revelación. Y es una revelación cristiana eso. ¿En qué sentido es una revelación cristiana? Que básicamente está describiendo el lugar que ocupa Cristo en el mundo ante los gobernantes del mundo. Es majestuoso lo que acaba de decir. Y personalmente tengo que decir que si la descripción es honesta, esto viene de Dios. Esto viene de Dios. De una u otra manera, yo tengo la esperanza, sinceramente, de que Dios está trabajando en el corazón de Jordan Peterson y de la forma apropiada dada su personalidad, Dios lo está conduciendo hacia la verdad y a, y a, y a rodearle la manzana, a que no encuentre otra salida más que abrazar la fe cristiana. Tengo que ser honesto. Me pareció formidable esto que acaba de decir Jordan Peterson. ¿Qué opinas, Jordan Peterson? ¿Estás cerca o lejos de la fe cristiana? Déjamelo saber en los comentarios.